Yeah, we back. Now we gotta run it back, man. We gotta run it back. Now take a look up on the screen, man. If y'all remember a while back, I put out a classic video entitled How to Get Paid Like Tariq Nasheed. And after you get done with this one, run it back, go check out that one. That's like 45 minutes long, a classic video. And I had to get at Tariq because Tariq went on his live stream one day and he was just talking so crazy, man. I'm not even gonna waste no time. I'm gonna just play the footage and then I'm gonna come back on my commentary. Let's go. Colonizers came, you sat down and shut up in your own homeland where you outnumber all of the damn non-white people. You sat down and shut up and didn't do nothing and let them fleece your damn homeland. Don't get mad at us because you ain't got that in your damn spirit, bruh. You got on your track shoes. Don't get mad at us because we stand up. We call the bullshit out. That's a part of our culture. Because we're the only ones who are really consistently and the key word is consistently. We have consistently challenged the white supremacist status quo. You know, they can't break us. They've been trying to break us for 500 years. We have not been broken psychologically. They're like, damn, how do these niggas just keep on standing up? You know? You understand? We're the only ones to do that consistently. I'm not talking about a one hit wonder here or there. You had a revolution, might have had a revolution in Jamaica. You had one in Haiti a couple of hundred years ago and then no more. No, 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 no. Now, for those of y'all who watched my video way back, you already know it's a classic. We just debunked Tariq for like 40 minutes straight, man. I ran through an entire list of military engagements between African militaries and European militaries where the Europeans were thoroughly defeated. And keep in mind, the video was only 40 minutes long, so I couldn't really run down every single military engagement between the 16th century and the 19th century. I gave you the ones that I was most familiar with, such as, take a look up on the screen, the legendary battle between the Ashanti Empire and the British military. And you already know how that went down, where an Ashanti army of 10,000 men straight obliterated an invading British force and took the general of the army, General Charles McCarthy, cut off his head, severed his head, turned his skull into a damn drinking cup for the Ashanti king and wrapped it in gold. Yes, that's right. The king of the Ashanti took the general of the British military, cut off his head, turned his skull into a damn cup and wrapped his skull in gold and kept it as a trophy of war. And also in that video, take a look up on the screen. We spoke about how a Zulu army of 20,000 men straight obliterated once again a British invading force back in 1879. I would say, apart from the Haitian Revolution, of course, those are two of the most famous encounters between an African military and a European military where the Europeans were sent running and they were destroyed and humiliated on the battlefield. But in that video, man, I gave you damn near 10, 15 battles. It was a long list. But take a look up on the screen, man. We about to run through a list of military engagements once again. Now, on my video, I focus mainly on the 1800s, early 1900s, mid 1900s, mid early 1800s. I didn't really focus too much on the 1500s, 1600s, 1700s. But a good brother over at Twitter compiled a nice list for us. You know what I mean? Shout out to him. I believe he goes by the name of Ghost of Okello. And the reason why it's important for us to know these things is because it puts things in perspective. Because if you go by the European narrative of history, you would think that the Europeans walked in, they opened the front door, and they just planted their flag, and they just took over the whole continent in like an afternoon. That was That's not how it went down, bro. That's not how it went down. It was a 500-year endeavor of the Europeans coming through and doing what they did. So it puts everything in perspective when you understand how long it took over a long period of time for them to establish the power and the dominance they currently enjoy today. Now let's get into it. Take a look up on the screen. In the 1490s, 20 Portuguese warships with Pero Vaz de Cunha attacked the Wolof Empire in Senegambia and were repelled and went home defeated. In 1535, in the Battle for Roxo against African farmers in the Biago Archipelagos, I believe those are the, uh, the Bissagos Islands today off the coast of Guinea-Bissau, it ended in a Portuguese defeat with almost all of their marines wiped out, including their two commanders and a few surviving soldiers escaped in humiliation. And as you can see, twice in the year 1592 and in 1593, the Portuguese were defeated against the Lundu state in Southeast Africa. Now, let's continue. In January 1623, the Battle of Mbandakasi in Central Africa ended in a Portuguese defeat. In 1647, in the Battle of Kombi in Central Africa, it ended in a Portuguese defeat. In 1670, in the Battle of Kitombo in Central Africa, it ended in a Portuguese defeat. With too many Portuguese prisoners, they got decapitated and their heads were hung on several streets. And if you watched my last video from way back, How to Get Paid Like Tariq Nasheed, 
I also spoke about, I forget the exact name of the battle between the Congo and the Portuguese, but I spoke about how there was one military engagement between the Congo and the Portuguese where the entire surviving Portuguese military force was forced to strip naked. They were humiliated. The Portuguese suffered many humiliations in that Central African region, bro. Just, I don't know why the Portuguese king sent them out there, bro. Like, the Portuguese military was thoroughly humiliated on multiple occasions in the Central African region. Now, let's continue. In 1682, the French siege of Great Popo in West Africa ended in a French defeat. In 1684, the Battle of Mahungwe against the Razvi Empire in hand-to-hand -hand combat ended in a Portuguese defeat. In 1685, the English siege of Casamance ended in an English defeat. Now, for those of us who know the history, we already understand. We already know what it is, man. We already know what it is. And that's why, in my opinion, it's extremely shameful for so many of our people around the world to have an inferiority complex in front of the European, right? It's really shameful because when you understand the history, you understand that the balance of power was in our hands for an extremely long time. I know as a people, as a collective, we have a habit of focusing on our misfortunes and our tragedies and placing ourselves in a position of the victim. But the reason why the balance of power has shifted was due to one reason and one reason alone, technology. That's all it was, it was technology. Many of us have an inaccurate view of history because we don't really understand the full picture of how it went down because the European is never going to tell the entire side of the story where he was the one getting smacked up and washed up and kicked around and demolished on the battlefield. He's only going to tell you stories of his achievements, of his highlight moments, of his legendary times on the battlefield. He's never going to talk about a time when the black man smacked him up and sent him back home with no clothes. He's never going to talk about a time when he tried to invade the black man's territory and the entire invading force got assassinated the same day. He's never going to talk about those times of humiliation and defeat and subjugation that he suffered at the hands of the black man. He's going to act like it never happened. And that's why in school, they'll never talk about it. And that's why in these mainstream historical narratives of history, they'll never talk about it. And then what happens is we end up with situations where Tariq Nasheed thinks that the white man somehow walked into Africa, planted his flag, and then established sovereignty and supremacy over the region without anybody firing a shot. That's not how it went down, bro. That's not how it went down, man. <laughs> That's not how it went down. And if you watch my video, How to Get Paid Like Tariq Nasheed, we even spoke about the wars between the Corsa and the British military, where it was damn near 100 years of warfare. The one positive thing you got to say about the Europeans, they simply never gave up. They remained, they remained fixated on the agenda. They remained committed to the agenda. They never gave up. They never stopped. No matter how many soldiers they lost, no matter how many commanders and generals they lost, no matter how many times they were defeated and humiliated and sent back home, they simply never gave up, whether it was by physical military invasion, whether it was by diplomatic efforts, where it was by trying to play different kingdoms against each other, trying to take advantage of the different interests and different objectives of different nations and work to their benefit, whether they were playing divide and conquer amongst different kingdoms and different royal houses, they just never gave up. They never gave up. And they finally made a breakthrough in technology in the late 1800s when they started pulling up with them damn mountain guns and them damn Maxim machine guns. That was the game changer. That was when it was like, finally, you know what I mean? That, in their minds, they were like, finally, we got something. We got one. Like, you know, when you make a hit record, like, you know, when you're in the studio and you make a hit record, you're like, we got one. Yeah, we got one. When the Europeans started pulling up in the late 1800s with the mountain guns, with them seven pounders and them 10 pounders and them goddamn Maxim machine guns firing 500 shots a minute. That was the game changer. That was the game changer. It wasn't because of the Bible. It wasn't because of white supremacy. It was because my gun is bigger than yours. So at that point, it was no longer possible for the days of back when a 10,000, a 10,000 man Ashanti force obliterated an entire British force or a 20,000 Zulu force obliterated an entire British force because then with that Maxim machine gun firing 500 shots a minute and they got multiple machine guns, not this one, they pulling up with multiple shooters at that point. That was when it was a change in the warfare because in the late 1800s the europeans didn't even control 10 percent of africa but once they got their hands on that machine gun at that point the berlin conference happened in the late 1800s and then at that point they were just pulling up ready for war before the european machine gun was introduced they had to rely on numerical advantage which they didn't have because when it came to the african style of warfare you already know the black man pulling up 10,000 deep 20,000 deep 30,000 deep 50,000 deep and in many cases, the Europeans couldn't handle that. They were defeated simply by being overwhelmed by a numerical force 10 times, 20 times greater than what they arrived with. Similar to what happened in the battle between the Zulu and the British, where a Zulu force of 20,000 men armed with, with spears and knives and machetes and shit like that came through and stabbed an entire British force to death. And the British were armed with all type of muskets and rifles and all type of shit. And they still got defeated simply by being overwhelmed by the numerical advantage. But once the Europeans got their hand on that machine gun, that was the great equalizer. That's where you had situations where a few hundred Europeans could mow down an entire African troop 
it was at that point in the late 1800s the early 1900s where the gap in technology began to grow wider and wider between africans and europeans but before that time the technology was about the same the black man and the white man pretty much had the same level of military technology up until about the late 1800s that's a large reason why the haitian revolution was successful and that's also a large reason why the haitian government was so powerful in the early 19th century and i'm not even going to waste no time on this video trying to debunk Tariq when he said that the haitian revolution was a one-hit wonder you already know man the haitian government has had military engagements with the french the british the spanish the portuguese the germans and the u.s marines i've already done videos covering those topics go to my playlist section you already know what it is but to highlight what i said when i talked about how the black man and the white man had the same level of military technology up until the late 19th century when you look at the citadel that was built in haiti under the regime of king henry christophe i believe from the years 1805 to 1819 then you already know what i mean i'm not talking about the architecture yes we already know it's one of the largest if not the largest military fortress on the planet built on top of a mountain 3,000 feet up in the goddamn sky built self-made by black men for black men from the minds of black men built from the hands of black men with damn near 400 cannons facing in every single direction but what i'm trying to say is this when you understand that it took damn near 500 years for the europeans to finally unlock the code to defeat you when you realize it took damn near 500 years of military engagement and diplomatic action for the europeans to finally gain supremacy over you then you will no longer see yourself as a victim you'll realize that the balance of power has always shifted from different regions and different cultures and that's why on my channel i don't really use terms like white supremacy because when i look at history i don't see white supremacy when i look at history i see white men getting defeated humiliated humiliated by the black man humiliated by the muslim humiliated by the arab if you want to be honest the white man didn't even start getting money up until the past couple of centuries he was broke as fuck <laughs> he was broke as fuck for a minute nigga was starving living in filth nigga didn't even wash his ass nigga it was it was hard time for the white man for a very long time <laughs> if you want to be honest if you want to be real there is nothing supreme about these people they are only supreme because you see yourself as inferior but if you look at history when our economies were able to rival their economies where our militaries were able to rival their militaries they were thoroughly and utterly defeated and humiliated in damn near every military encounter that's why during those days during the colonial period the europeans would prefer to handle things diplomatically or maybe work behind the scenes divide and conquer try to play different sides against each other to weaken them internally and then conquer them in the end they had to resort to all types of dishonesty and trickery and deception because when it came to straight up combat on the battlefield man to man gun to gun cannon to cannon they didn't want to see that smoke they didn't want to see that smoke but i'm telling you once they got their hand on that machine gun it was over and in fact let's read a paragraph from an article talking about what i mean take a look up on the screen the map of africa had been hurriedly divided up by european powers during a dark november afternoon but claiming millions of acres was a different proposition to actually controlling it this is where the maxim came in they're talking about the machine guns a simple exhibition of his deadly ability to harness science and industry by releasing 500 bullets a minute gave Europeans a supreme psychological advantage. African leaders from Marrakesh to Mombasa were defeated before they could even consider resistance. The continent fell like a house of cards and it would not be long before the tables turned and Maxim was unleashed on an industrial scale. So yeah man, if you take Tariq Nasheed's narrative of history then you would think that the Europeans marched into Africa, ain't nobody fire a single shot, ain't nobody fire a single shot and they conquered the whole continent without breaking a sweat. If you listen to Tariq, Tariq Nasheed makes the white man sound like the creator of the universe, like the god of the universe. And also, if you wanna be honest, this is also off topic, but the reason why European governments and the United States government does not wanna pay reparations is because if you ask a so-called white nationalist, if you ask a so-called European supremacist, he'll tell you that they want it fair and square because they also know the true history they also know their forefathers were on the african continent getting smacked up on multiple occasions getting obliterated on multiple occasions until they finally cracked the code and started pulling up with the mountain guns and the machine gun but before that breakthrough in technology the europeans were suffering massive levels of humiliation on the world stage so in my opinion in the mind of the white man in the mind of the european in the mind of the european supremacists he's thinking like this bro You've been bullying me. You've been taking my lunch money for centuries and centuries. You've been knocking my teeth out, kicking me in the face, beating me up, jumping me. And now I'm finally in a position of power. And now you want me to pay reparations? Hell no, nah, I ain't paying. In my opinion, I think that's what they feel. I think that's what they feel. I think that's the real reason why. And I did videos on this in the past. That's why the white man doesn't want to pay reparations to the black man. 
because the black man been bullying the white man for centuries and centuries. When the black man was in a position of power, we gotta keep it real. We were stepping on necks and we were chopping off heads, literally. No, we literally, we were really chopping off heads. You remember the Ashanti versus the British General Charles McCarthy? We literally chopped off his head. We gotta keep it real. Our forefathers, they weren't nothing to play with. Our forefathers weren't nothing to play with. So it is what it is, man. Tariq Nasheed, stop giving out false narratives of history. Stop this bullshit. And shout out to that brother on Twitter, Ghost of Okello, who gave us that list of all those military battles. In my opinion, I think he focused too much on the Portuguese. I think he should have added some of the some of the battles with the English and the French. But it is what it is, man. The Portuguese got humiliated. <laughs> got humiliated so many goddamn times, even against the Haitians. Y'all remember? Y'all remember I told you about during the regime of King Henry Christophe? Man, listen, those naval battles between the Haitian Navy and when those Portuguese slave ships got captured and the captain of the ship got arrested. Oh, man. Listen, the Portuguese suffered massive humiliations at the hands of black men. Massive humiliations. It was multiple locations where the Portuguese got humiliated. When the Portuguese came to Central Africa, got smacked several times. When the Portuguese went to, went to South Africa, got smacked several times. When the Portuguese went to the coast of West Africa, got smacked several times. I mean, Jesus Christ. Man. <laughs> God damn. God damn. But yeah, man. Listen, life is about power. I talk about it on my channel all the time. It's not about morality. It's not about equality. It's about who got the most money and who got the biggest guns. That's what it's about. Who got the most bankroll and who got the most shooters. That's what it's about. And that's why the objective of every African president should be to strengthen your economy and to strengthen your armed forces and also to strengthen your level of military technology. Now, of course, I'm not saying that we got to neglect education, internal security, you know, the internal domestic economy, agriculture. I'm not saying to ignore those important parts of a country i'm saying that every black head of state should be focused on strengthening your economy and strengthening your armed forces and your level of access to military technology that should be top of the agenda for every black head of state and Tariq is such a damn bum he don't even know that even in the present day 2023 engagements and diplomatic actions are still being taken between african and european nations in fact we already know the french military was kicked out of mali and burkina faso sometime last year and their NGOs and their ambassadors and their media was also suspended and banned from the country. So even in the present day, African nations are still going toe to toe against the European, whether diplomatically or actually taking military action. So basically, Tariq Nasheed, you don't know shit. You don't know shit. But then again, I can't really blame you because you're a product of the American public school system. And like I said, the white man is never going to tell you about his times in history where he suffered humiliation and defeat at the hands of black men, especially. So we already know what it is. It's a button for card that's Celine back in the building. Yes, indeed. Like, share, subscribe, cash app in the description. And I'm gone. Peace. Reincarnated, I'm back in the original fashion. I left on a horse and came back in that ass. And I left with abundance and came at the famine. We used to be pyramids, now we be rapping. Look how the mighty have fallen. Used to be running, now we be walking. When you be cooning, that's when they applauded. Selling your soul, your sons and your daughter. Gotta come up in this shit. They stuck in the mix. Really, my heart would be breaking. That's why I'm stacking that paper and handle my business. Pass it down in generation. Talking about money and power and building a nation. That's a deadly combination. Never be watching the TV, they pushing the genders. Falsifying information. No, they got malice intentions. Step in the room and I'm feeling it tension. Enemy watching, he blocking my vision. Get for the check, cause I need my redemption. Building my kingdom, I need it protected. Ready for war like a young money Congo. Never decided the team is the motto. Up in the crib and I'm whipping up waffles. Up in the crib and I'm smoking gelato. I'm chilling, I'm taking my pain and making ambition. I'm blessed by the guys, but I ain't religious. I came for the power, they came for the bitch. They making no hour, they wage. I got business. This shit is an art, and they can never be taught. Selling my soul, I can never be bought. Play with my money, I see you in court. Run to the check and I do it for sport. Babylon falling, I go to the source. Packing my luggage and go overseas. Shorty be with me and she so at least. Shorty be chugged and I'm calling her Hershey. Secret intelligence probably gonna murder me. Don't fuck with brands, cause nigga, I'm Haitian. Say the wrong shit and you're smacking their faces.